welcome back to the ICN Demon series and in this video we'll be looking at network architecture. So all network architecture is, it's a model that Cisco recommends we follow in order to design our networks in, in a scalable, re redundant and simple way. So when we first open up a business, this will be first open up an office, we're obviously going to have it's just a single switch because we're, 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 we're just a small business connecting our devices together. And the way the story goes is that as we get more and more people joining our business, we have to have more and more devices, which means that we have to have more switches so we can add more devices to our network. And as the network grows, we're adding more and more switches, and we may have to even open up another building or another office space, and that switch is there. The problem with this network, it's, it's a flat network in that there's only a single connection between each of our devices and there's no redundancy. So if this link fails, essentially this path of network is cut off from this path of network. And if we only had internet access in this office, that means that these devices here wouldn't even be able to access the internet. Or if this device fails, essentially devices that connect to this switch and connect over here would have no internet access and no access to network resources. So as you can see, a single failure, a single link going down or a single switch going down would cause a massive network outage and there's, there's no redundancy here. There's also no scalability. Because if we wanted to add redundancy, we'd, we'd, we'd have to have multiple connections running between our switches, which is, isn't feasible. We would have cabling everywhere, which would be an administrative overhead. So instead of going all, th all through this headache, Cisco recommends that we follow a certain model in order to build our networks in the right way with scalability and redundancy in mind. So the first model we're going to talk about is known as the three-tier hierarchy model. The three-tier hierarchy model consists of three layers and each layer performs a specific function within our network. So the access layer is used to connect our, our end devices, our PCs, our laptops, our servers to our network. The distribution layer is used to forward traffic between the access layer switches and the core layer is used as, as an aggregation point between our distribution layer switches. So to understand this more, let's look at a, at a simple example of, of this model. So as you can see with this model, we, we have an access layer which connects our end devices together. And as you can see, there are no links running between the access layer switches. Again, that, that wouldn't be scalable. If we had to have links running between every access layer switch and two links for redundancy, it would cause administrative overhead. Uh, at the moment, we only have three access layer switches, but imagine we had four, five, or six, or seven. Instead, all the access layer switches connect back to an aggregation point known as the distribution layer. And what the distribution layer does is forward traffic between our different access layer switches. So it allows devices that connect to this access layer switch to still access devices that connect to this access layer switch and still provides redundancy simply because we, we for each switch we have three cables it means that we can connect to devices using this route, using this route or using this route. So as you can see, it provides redundancy and scalability easily without, without having to be complicated. And where's the core layer? The core layer comes in when we have got multiple buildings. So think of the distribution layer as when you have a access layer switch on each floor, the distribution layer just connects those switches together. With the core layer, the core layer connects our buildings together. So imagine we're a massive enterprise and we have multiple buildings. The core layer would be a, a would consist of a, a building with core switches connected uh, and running on that building, and we would connect our distribution layer switches back to the core layer, providing redundancy and scalability without any administrative or much administrative overhead. As you can see, it's a very scalable solution because to provide redundancy, all we need is two connections back to the core layer, and we have full redundancy. So if this thing goes down, this switch over here still has connection connectivity to all the other distribution layer switches if we just cross connected our distribution layer switches together in this example it will cause too much overhead because we would have two connections here two connections here two connections over here then two connections over here and so to achieve the same thing as with the core switches in this example we'd have to have two four eight six ten twelve cables instead of as in our example Maybe only having six six cables, which provides the same redundancy as cross-connecting distribution layer switches. 
as you can see, the three tier high rocket models used to provide scalability and redundancy in our networks. It says how we build our networks in the right way, so we can support growth, we can support adding additional switches, we can support adding additional buildings, and still allow for redundancy simply, with, um, without having to have too many cable connections or, with, or, or without it being very, very messy and untidy. So just as a side note, when we were talking about networks, we were talking about devices that all connect, that are, that are, that are part of an enterprise, and all connect to the same computer network. In reality, with enterprise network, enterprise network itself is actually made up of smaller networks and is known as inter-networks. All the inter-network is, is a bunch of sm a smaller networks connected together, which are owned and operated by the same administrative control. So in this case, we have smaller networks here, which, which may all be part of the Google network. So they're the owned by Google, but instead of being one large network, we have smaller networks which allows for separation and security. The reason I mention this, because in this example, we can see that we have three separate broadcast domains. And so imagine that this is a high school or, or something, and that these broadcast domains are essentially the different areas within the high school. So we've got IT department, we have the um, English department and we have the math department. So by putting them all on their separate broadcast domains, it means that we can have local resources that, are, that only they can access. And it also makes our, our networks more scalable and redundant. So if something goes wrong here, um, and let's say what's called a broadcast storm occurs. So with a broadcast storm, a device malfunctions and continuously just sends broadcast messages. Continuously sends broadcast messages which causes a network outage. We've limited that broadcast domain to only this switch so any devices in this area will be affected devices over here and over here even though they're using the same network infrastructure will not be affected because they're in different broadcast domains so with the distribution layer switches we'd run what's called layer 3 links between our actors and distribution layer switches which allows the distribution layer switches to route between networks so in this case this these devices over here, these devices over here, these devices over here would be part of smaller separate networks and they're connected together through these distribution layer switches which force traffic between our networks. So what I'm trying to say, when we've been looking at networks in previous videos, we've been seeing networks as just a whole bunch of devices connected together. In reality, networks shouldn't consist of more than two to three hundred devices. And obviously, if we as a company uh, have let's say in a single building a thousand or two thousand devices we couldn't put those all in the same network because it the network would just be very slow so instead we create what's called internetworks which are smaller networks under single administrative control which all connect together and so devices in different networks are still able to communicate however these are seen as being part of the same enterprise network because they're all owned by the same company by the same business so the other the other uh, model we can have is known as the collapsed core. It's normally used when we have a smaller network, but we still want to have scalability and growth and follow the, the um, Cisco model. So the, essentially the core and distribution layers are combined into one. So let's look at an example of this very quickly. So with the collapsed core model, the core and distribution layers are combined into one, which means that it's a single layer which performs the function of connecting our buildings together as well as forwarding traffic between our distribution layer switches. This can maybe be used when we only have two buildings. And so our access layer switches, let's see we have this the distribution layer switches there. The access layer switches will connect to the distribution layer switches, allowing redundancy and communication between our um, access layer switches, but the access layer switches will have links to each other, which would connect connect our buildings together. Now, obviously, because this still follows the Cisco model, if we added more buildings, we could we could then create a core layer and separate the functions individually. So think of this: think of the distribution layer as forwarding traffic between switches in your same building, and the core layer as connecting your buildings together. And that's all it really is. That's why the collapsed core distribution layer, that's why the collapsed core layer, the collapsed core model exists. Because we may not have six, seven, eight, nine buildings. We may only have one or two buildings. And instead of having by putting a third building and expensive switches for a core layer, we can instead combine the functions into um, a single layer, which saves us some money, but still al allow us to have redundancy and scalability easily. And if we add more buildings, we're still able um, to add, a, add in a core layer 
which provide us with better redundancy and better scalability. So in this video we've seen the different network architectures that we can have, Collapse Core and the 3 tier hierarchical model and we've seen why they're used essentially just for scalability and redundancy if we if we created our networks as flat networks it means that they'd all part be part of the same broadcast domain also by having this model it means that we can separate devices within our network into separate broadcast domains into separate networks smaller networks which are still part of the same enterprise network because they're still under the control of a single business. But by splitting them up into separate networks, it means that our networks can be smaller and can essentially run quicker because there's less broadcast traffic flowing over those networks. Imagine we had 2,000 devices. We could split those up into networks of 100 devices, which means that within our enterprise network, we'd have 20, um, 20 smaller networks, known as internet networks because they're all connected together. They were able to communicate some resources and share information with each other. And that all be performed at wide speed because the distribution layer distribution layer can perform routing and can route traffic between our different um, our different networks. The collapse call would be used when we want to have scalability and redundancy and we we, we expect fu um, future growth, but at the moment our network isn't big enough to justify spending money on the three tier hierarchy model. Instead, the core distribution layer would, would be combined into one function, allowing us to allowing us to connect our access switches together and connect our our devices in different buildings together. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.